I suppose there is a part of my heart that is absolutely terrified for the world with regard to this coming one world economic system where they want to convert everything into like a digital currency, which to me is sort of the ultimate in manipulation of power, of money, of funds, of control, of being able to potentially dip into people's bank accounts and steal their funds. Um, for those who are in charge and in power and sort of run the whole network to just add zeros to their bank account to just stay in that position of the ultimate wealth of this entire world seems like a really, really bad idea. But of course, the people that stand to gain the most are they're really excited about this idea. They really want to do this. And we can see how they got a taste for blood, so to speak, when they had just a paper currency and they were able to just completely steal the wealth out of that dollar, these central banks and the Federal Reserve and all that stuff. And there's central banks all over the world. I mean, they have a monopoly on setting the value for currency and they can go in and destroy a currency and a population if they want to. I mean, they can do whatever they want. And these people are now orchestrating a scenario where they will have the ultimate ability to manipulate a digital currency. And it's funny because the Bible told us a long time ago that this is precisely what you would see at the end. A one world government, a one world religion, and a one world currency. And it's funny how people are, you know, they're, they're free will creatures. They are exacting these steps and, and, at the other end of things, you have this sovereign God and his will, you know, is also bringing things into being within a certain time frame. And he, God predicted it. God's watching these little human beings. He wrote to you to forewarn you in the book of John and these things are coming about and it is not for the good of people. I can tell you that right now. Um, I'm telling you that it, it feels to me like we are being set up for these coming seals from the human origin end of things. And when you look at things like this is a brand spanking new video, I'll leave a link down below so you can go check it out. It says recession level job cuts and layoffs, August, 2019. And we've done videos talking about the crop failure on all seven continents. And then look here in the Midwest, Del Monte, who deals with the canned uh, vegetables. They're closing down a bunch of plants, but it's not just them. And so you can just see there is this, this, this virus of sorts going throughout uh, these retail places of business that are closing down one by one, automakers, different places that are all cataloged by the Silver Report Uncut and then the Money GPS too. And there is like this contagion happening where they're, they're responding to the dollar losing its power and needing more of them to keep things going and all of those things that play into it. And so this is a really important video. It's only 12, 16, 12 minutes, 16 seconds. So that's part of the concern of where things are going. I'm going to play some of this, the central banker call central banker <laughs> calls for the end of the U S dollar as the reserve currency. This is so huge. <laughs> Let's go to this video. Keep an eye on it. The Chinese currency, the renminbi, has been cited as an alternative to the dollar along with the proposed digital currencies such as Facebook's Libra. 
And last but not least, Carney said that new technologies could allow for a global digital currency to challenge the U.S. currency. Now, there's more to this in here, and I think people should understand what is happening, but I don't have enough time to get into all the details. I will connect that in with this. It's the interview that I was talking about, and here is his quote. The dollar is the global currency, we know that. The challenge is that the US share of the global economy has been reducing. The dollar share of payments, not just financial assets, but payments. A lot of payments of countries that have nothing to do with the US make payments in dollars. And what happens in situations like we're in tonight, where the US, to its credit, is relatively strong, doing better, the Fed has been doing the right thing. They have adjusted policy, they have tightened policy as it was was strengthening. Now they're making, they're doing the right thing, but they adjusted and it is relatively strong. That means the rest of the world policy is tighter than it needs to be and that feeds back on the US economy in a way that ultimately slows this economy. This is interesting by the way as he looks into the data and the events that are unfolding. Of course he's a central banker so he's going to say certain things but we can take little pieces from it and I do think it is wise to follow what they say but as always take it with a grain of salt. So further along in here, he starts to clarify exactly what he means. And essentially, it's that the US has too much influence over the global financial system while things have really changed. And he's not suggesting that the United States should just give up its power or something. The point is very clear, and I've made this before. If China and Russia are doing a deal together, why should the US dollar stand in between them? Why should the US financial system system stand in between them? Why do they have to transact in between each other in a way that I like to think of it an analogy being a highway or a road and that is built by the United States? Of course that doesn't make any sense. So now they're trying to get around that and you see a country like China engaging in currency swaps with countless countries around the world, things that continuously add up, they're getting bigger, they're signing new agreements, it is expanding on a global scale. So things have certainly changed, there is no doubt about it. The People's Bank of China is, quote, close to issuing its own digital uh. currency, according to a senior official. Uh. So this is official documentation that is coming out here, and I think it's interesting because previously they said this thing is crazy, this thing is ridiculous, and now they're jumping on. Of course, this would allow them to be more in control of the situation, and I do believe that's what it's all about. Then we take it a step further because we're looking at all of these currency swaps. We are looking at a big change in direction from the way things were, let's say, 20 years ago. This is just a piece of that. Turkey got a $1 billion foreign cash boost from China in June. China is trying to reign supreme and they are doing so and pulling out all the stops. You can see what they are doing, their actions globally, partnering up with countries all around the world and building infrastructure in different places, spending billions and billions and billions of dollars everywhere from South America to Africa and all over the place. So definitely watch what they're doing, not necessarily just the back and forth you're getting getting in the news about the whole tariff issue. No, no, no. We've got to look at actually what they're building, where they are investing. Then I wanted to touch on these two articles. Central banks don't tell it like it is. They want wiggle room. They're planning to cut, but at the last moment they may decide, no, we shouldn't cut. Also, they want a little bit of ambiguity just so the market can react in its own way. And this is what we get all the time. You hear Jerome Powell talking about the same repeated points over and over again. It's funny because you know exactly what they're going to say before the meeting even happens. And that brings me in to my next point, which is that they purposely use their statements, their forward guidance, as the Federal Reserve likes to call it, in order to manipulate the financial system without actually taking action. Now, you have to see what happened in India. This is crazy. 
Okay, so check this out. As India's economic climate becomes more complicated, so have the messages from monetary policy makers. Okay, so hear me out. The Reserve Bank of India watchers were left scrambling this week over their dictionaries and Google searches to decipher parts of the speech by the governor of India's central bank. Look at this. Estimates of economic growth in India have unfortunately been subject to a fair degree of, let me try and pronounce this word, okay? Flockinasinhilip. Pilification. I'm not joking if you're just listening and you can't see this, what I have in front of me. Let me try that again. Flockina asini hilipilification. I don't know what kind of word that is, but apparently, according to the Oxford Dictionary, this word is rare and it's originating in the 18th century to describe the action of estimating something as worthless. No, no, no. That word is worthless. And that's what the central banks do. They are constantly trying to cover up everything that they do. They are always engaging in something behind the scenes. They're always talking about their, quote, independence. At the same time, they say they're being transparent. Do not believe the lies. My goodness. As recession concerns mount, dozens of central banks are cutting rates. More than 30 central banks around the world have cut interest rates this year. We're talking about a year when supposedly everything is fine, and yet we are seeing 30 central banks around the world cutting rates. Now, this right here out of the New York Times just gives you a chart to give you an idea of the activities of these central banks on a very basic level, of course, and you could see here for yourself, whether we're looking at China, Japan, Euro, Britain, Britain, Canada, they are either increasing or decreasing, but it looks like the majority of central banks around the world have decreased their interest rates, particularly as we head into the second half of 2019. We're going to see more of that. Oh, wow. He goes on to say that all the central banks are working together in concert to make sure and manipulate the markets and the way that they want things to go. So all of it is organized, orchestrated, manufactured. None of it is happening on a on an organic basis. And that should terrify you, the level of control and manipulation that is happening all around you. He goes on to talk about how China is not paying for it. Trump's tariff hike hits everywhere from beer brewers to book publishers. And this was written uh, August 24th, 2019. And, you know, I would tell you that when you see that manga hat or MAGA, whatever it is, make America great again, I would tell you that from a, a Mason's perspective, which is what Trump is and a Kabbalist, he actually means the reverse of that. In Satanism, you just invert things. So if his platform has been to make America great again, that actually means he wants to do things that that weaken us. And so when you've got this recession that's happening and you have all these store closures, you have all these people that are losing their incomes, then he puts tariffs out. It gets passed on to us, which makes it harder for the retailers retailers who produce things to make a profit. And then you already have uh, an economy where people are not spending as freely as they once were. That all has an impact. It feeds on itself and it just goes to create more uh, store closures, layoffs, problems for people and so on and so forth. Um, he, what he, oh, look at that, implementing hiring freezes. Oh, wow. And this is what stores are doing and considering price increases. So it's all just being passed along to you when you have this phenomena happening of the middle class disappearing. It's being orchestrated. Where's that money going? The middle class is disappearing. That money is going into these rich manipulators who will go on camera and then tell you that they're Christians. Don't you know? I will go ahead and put this um, video and the other one in the links uh, area in the description box so that you can watch it in full if you want to. Uh, but I guess the great takeaway of this is that what the Bible said would happen in the timing that it said it would happen, according to that Daniel statue, we're down at the ankles. 
in my estimation, they are bringing forth that transhumanism, digital reality, that uh, global currency, that one world trap, that Noahide law that's also being called natural law. They're bringing it right through the religious right. They're mixing government and religion into one for a very powerful push to get people underneath the Noahide and to take away people's ability to have their currency the way that we've always had it before, where you had um, safeties in place that it couldn't be manipulated back when it was the days of of um, the gold standard backing our dollar. And now they're moving it to this digital currency so that they can manipulate you even further and force you to do what they want. <laughs>